Hi, my name is Joan Erickson, uh, professor of saxophone and jazz studies at the University of Montana. Let's talk about the big band saxophone section. Over time, it developed into two altos, two tenors, and one baritone saxophone. This wasn't always the case, but over time, composers and directors saw that this was an ideal and flexible sound for the big band. What is the goal of the saxophone section? I think the goal should be to add style and virtuosity to the big band. Saxophonists are often good jazz players and therefore can help the band sound more stylistically authentic. It's also easier to play virtuosic fast passages on a saxophone than say, for example, a trombone. This is why the saxophone soli became a staple of the big band repertoire. Uh, saxophone soli is when the saxophones are all featured, playing the same melody and rhythms, but typically voiced out in harmony. The sax section is now going to demonstrate a sax soli and good balance. This is UM Jazz Ensemble 1 saxophone section. Here's an image of how a saxophone section is typically voiced out in harmony. It's important to understand this for purposes of sound and knowing your unique role in the section. Notice that there are five notes and each one of these notes gets assigned to one of the saxophones. The top note goes to lead alto, the next one goes to alto two, tenor one, tenor two, and baritone. Have you ever thought about why you're sitting the way you're sitting in the section? Typically, lead alto will sit in the middle. Second alto will be to the immediate right, and lead tenor will be also to the right. On the left side, you have second tenor, and then baritone saxophone. I will explain why this particular seating works very well. It hasn't always been the case, and there are variations to the seating. Some of you might sit differently in your band, uh, but this is a pretty standard seating for any modern big band. As you can see on the screen, lead alto is lined up directly in front of lead trumpet and lead trombone. This allows the lead alto to follow lead trumpet better. When they all play melodies and rhythms together, for example, in a shout section, uh, the lead trumpet is not going to be able to hear lead trombone and lead uh, alto very well. Lead trumpet also has the highest voice at that point and is going to be the loudest voice in the band. So lead alto and lead trombone needs to follow lead trumpet and this makes it very easy. The audience is also hearing all the melody parts, the top melody parts in a line. Sitting in the middle helps everyone in the section to hear lead alto better. As you can see, second alto is lined up with trumpet two and trombone two. All those instruments tend to play upper inner voices in the harmony within their section. Lead tenor is sitting the closest to the rhythm section. Most of the improvised solos in the saxophone section is in the lead tenor chair. And thus, it's important that the lead player in the rhythm section can hear and see each other well. Proximity becomes important for sound and communication uh, once a solo starts. Um, in any solo in the, in the big band, it turns from a large ensemble to a small combo, and you want the small combo to be as close to each other as they can. Second tenor is lined up with trumpet three and trombone three, playing the lower inner voices in their sections. Baritone saxophone is lined up with the bass trombone, and they often have parts together. They're also on the other side of the band from the actual bass, and it becomes like having subwoofers on each side of the band with bass uh, sounds coming from both sides of the bands. 
Now, what about your role in the section? Every chair in the saxophone section has a unique role. And if done well, it will enhance the overall sound of the section. But if done poorly, can ruin the section sound. Even if four out of five perform their roles to satisfaction, one person can make it problematic. Let's demonstrate some problems. What if some of the people in the section is not cutting off notes with the lead player? Section, I'm going to ask you to have lead alto play correctly, but the rest of you be really lazy with your cutoffs. What if the people is not articulating the same way as the others? We're going to ask our second alto player, Cade, to mess up a bunch of articulations. If it says short, play it long. If it says long, play it short. Let's talk about the specific people in the section. Lead alto. You are the leader of the section. You are the dictator of the section. A big band section is not a democracy. You choose how the section plays everything when playing together. This is a massive responsibility because it means that you need to make sure that your playing is accurate and authentic at all times. You have a lot of choices to make. Should you bend a note? Is, the, is this quarter note long or short? Is this note clipped? What dynamic shape should the phrase have? Should I use vibrato? The list goes on and on and on. How will you make these choices? Find a really good recording of the piece you're playing. Listen and make careful notes in your music. Then play along with the recording until you have the interpretation down. You may find several recordings of it, and then you can make choices based on all those recordings. This needs to happen right away, as soon as you get the music from your director, because your section is waiting to imitate what you do, down to the smallest detail. If your interpretation keeps changing, it makes their job very difficult. Also, be aware that different big bands and time eras require different stylistic elements. For example, lead alto Marshall Royal's vibrato in the Count Basie band is different from lead alto Johnny Hodges' vibrato in the Duke Ellington Orchestra. The modern big band, the Maria Schneider Orchestra, does not use vibrato very much at all. Pay attention to the band and the eras as this will change the required sound. What type of sound should the lead alto have? A cutting, loud, and bright sound is usually best, as this will project through the brass section and will allow the rest of the saxophone section to hear you better. Uh, it's hard to imitate something that you can't hear. However, this does not mean that you should be playing loudly all the time, just louder than the rest of your section. Everyone else needs to be sensitive to when the lead player is coming down in volume, they need to stay underneath the lead alto. If you cannot hear your lead alto player, you are too loud. The lead player also needs good intonation as the main melody part is usually located in the lead part. Let's explore problems that can happen with the lead player. Aiden, play too softly. Everyone else, be louder than lead alto.
This time, Aiden, play out of tune. didn't sound very very good at all. Let's talk about the second alto. Your job is to make the lead player sound good. The lead player is playing with a bright cutting sound, often high in the register, so it can get a bit thin sounding without help. You are that help. You should play with a broader, darker sound, slightly softer than the lead alto, preferably with use of subtone. We'll talk about that a little bit later. You are the padding and resonance that makes the lead alto sound fatter, fat with a pH. Let's explore some more problems. Cade, our second alto, play with a very cutting, loud, bright sound, like a lead player. Aiden, play with more of a second alto type of sound, so the roles become reversed. that now we lost the lead voice. Lead tenor. The lead tenor is playing the middle voice in the harmony. And so there is a caution here. The lead tenor is often a very good saxophonist who plays jazz well and gets lots of solos. The lead tenor part is often in a mid to high register and can easily cut through stuff. Combine those factors, you often get a person who's trying to lead from the tenor chair. Do not do that. Your inner voice makes no sense as a melodic lead voice. You need to be careful not to overplay, and your moment in the sun will happen once you get your improvised solos. Also be aware that lead tenor can often play melody parts with other instruments such as guitar or second trumpet. Let's explore some problems. We're gonna have our lead player, Garrett, overplay from the tenor chair, try to lead the section in a different way than Aiden. see this causes some confusion. The second tenor. Without a doubt, the second tenor has the most difficult notated parts. The second tenor is often in a low register, lots of repeated notes, weird intervals. The second tenor needs to make sure to accent the same way that the lead alto does. Even if your line is repeated, you need to accent like the movement of the uh, lead alto part. The sound of the second tenor is similar to second alto. It should be broad, resonant, preferably use lots of subtone. If you wonder what subtone is, go to my video called The Jazz Embouchure Using Subtone. I think of second tenor as the glue of the section. We're gonna ask Jolene to demonstrate what subtone sounds like. <laughs> We're going to ask Jolene to play a part of this soli that sounds like a typical second tenor part. Let's talk about the baritone saxophone. You are the bass of the saxophone section. 
you should be almost as loud as lead alto and you should be one of the louder voices in the entire big band. You must have great intonation as the rest of the saxophones are relying on you for their foundational pitch. You're often playing in a perfect octave with the lead alto. This means that you're playing the exact same thing that lead alto is playing, one octave lower. If you're out of tune, the lead alto will sound terrible. We're gonna ask our baritone player, Colton, to purposely play out of tune to show how this will throw the whole section sound. Colton to play too softly in the berry chair. saxophone will often leave the saxophone section and hook up with the bass trombone or bass, playing melodies unique to the low instruments. Be aware when you're with the low instruments and when you're with the saxophone section. I hope this session has helped you understand the saxophone section in your unique role. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through the UM School of Music website. Thank you for listening. And thank you to the UM Jazz Ensemble 1 saxophone section. Take it away, guys. Good this time.